Hello, welcome to Salt City Knits podcast. I'm Emily, and this is a podcast all about my making. And today I have knitting and quilting to share. So I am really happy to be here. It is October 12th, and this is episode 20. I can't believe 20 episodes in already. So exciting. So you can find me on Ravelry as Salt City Knits and on Instagram as Salt City Knits. And my patterns are available on Ravelry and at yarnbrary.com. And all of my information is linked below in the description box. So you can definitely find me there. I am hosting a knit along. This month is our last month for this knit along. And that is the Salt City Knits Shawl Along or SCK Shawl Along, where we just are knitting or crocheting shawls. And you can absolutely double dip. So I encourage that if you are doing any other big exciting shawl knit alongs right now, please make sure to also tag SCK Shawl Along to enter to win prizes. And the prize that we have for October, I have so much stuff here. So is I have two prizes. The first prize is this bundle. It is this full skein of this gorgeous, let's see, come on, here we go. Tonal navy blue. That is Yarn Bee um, Authentic Hand Dyed in Dark Denim. And that is a fingering weight, 100% super, superwash merino. And this beautiful set of Lay Family Yarns Minis. And look how pretty those look together. They look so great together. This is the Squiddle Village Yarn Club Mini Bundle. And I am not sure which month this was from. But Squiddle Village was Lay Family Yarns um, Minis of the Month for 2022, and they were so fun. So this is one prize to go together. And then the other prize is um, any of your choice of my shawl patterns. So make sure to enter the SCK Shawl Along. All right, today I have a little bit of uh, life news and then I have some finished objects, some works in progress. I'll be talking about my West Knits Mystery Knit Along and I know there's lots of feelings about that and I'm gonna share mine. And then I also have some pattern news on this shawl, the Backcountry Shawl, which I showed a lot more in my last podcast, but I'll talk about this um, toward the end. And then I have two book recommendations for you today. One is a knitting book and one is not a knitting book. It's just an awesome book. So let's get rolling into everything. So first off, last um, weekend I celebrated my birthday and I had so much fun. On Friday night, this wasn't really a birthday celebration per se, but you know, let's count it. I um, went out to dinner with my husband and two of our really good friends who work with us in Heroic Youth and our two youth leaders that were kind of the head youth leaders, not kind of, they were for sure, the head youth leaders over all of the other 230 teens that participate in it, participated in our program this year. And we just had a really beautiful dinner and talked about everything that they had accomplished throughout the year and just kind of a wrap up experience for them. And it was so good. They are such amazing kids. They also happen to be our kids as in this year, uh, my son was the male youth leader and our friends, the Nielsen's, their daughter was the male main female youth leader, which is something that we've never done before. And um, they're just so great. So it was a really lovely evening. And even though technically it was my birthday, definitely counted that as a birthday kickoff. Um, on Saturday, I got to go to lunch. There was a lot of food involved in my birthday. We went to lunch with um, my parents and three of my four kids and my son-in-law and my cute grandson. And we went to a Brazilian barbecue restaurant. It was really tasty. It was just delightful. 
And then after lunch, my kids were gone doing stuff. They were doing some shopping and things for my birthday, but then they also had lots of plans with friends and stuff. And so they were gone for the rest of the day and my husband was at work. And so I came home and I put on a movie and I got my knitting and I made some herbal tea and I just had the most lovely quiet afternoon. Definitely was fabulous. So I just had a lot of fun that day. Um, very, I mean, a lot of relaxing, you know, knitter type fun, the kind that we all enjoy. <laughs> Um, on Sunday, all of my kids were here and my husband made fajitas, which is one of my favorite meals that, that oh, and definitely my favorite that he makes. He is excellent at them. And we had, yeah, chicken fajitas and just celebrated together. Oh, also on Friday, I didn't mention, I got together with three of my very closest friends and we just did lunch and, um, hung out, knitted, talked, visited, hugged, laughed, ate more food. <laughs> Just, it was great. So finally, I mean, if this is not enough celebration already, on Monday night, we went to the super fun theater here in Salt Lake City. I think I mentioned it in our last podcast. Sorry for the background noise. It is garbage pickup day. And today, apparently right at this moment, there's the garbage pickup, which I am so grateful for. So hopefully that's not too loud on the background. But um, we went to the Desert Star Playhouse, which is here in Salt Lake. And it is um, just like a ridiculously good time. It's a theater that's styled after a Wild West kind of saloon, um, the way it's decorated and set up. And they have like a player piano that plays while you're getting seated and everything. And um, the, it's a dinner theater. So again, more food, although I was much more restrained. I had my, my chicken salad, it was excellent. And, um, and then they do a show that's a parody show. So it's just hilarious and good fun. So this one was called Adam's Family Wednesday's Haunted Mansion. And so it was just, it's its just a ridiculous kind of funny, tongue in cheek. Um, they throw all kinds of like pop culture references in and stuff like that, very family friendly. Um, it was hilarious. We took my two youngest who had never been to this theater before, they loved it. They had such a blast and after the main show, they do an oleo, which is just basically like variety show, kind of songs and dances and skits. Um, it's like sketch comedy kind of stuff. So anyway, it was just really, really fun and we had a great time. So that was awesome. I had somebody come to the door, so. Okay, so I'm back. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. It was just such a great birthday weekend extended weekend. <laughs> it was really fun to celebrate and um, yeah, I just had a great time. Also, let's see. Okay, so last night, I've been talking about this for weeks, but last night was our October knit night and this October is our month where we complete our secret swap project. So I will be sharing the items that I made for that in the finished object section of this, but I just wanted to tell you kind of how it all works. So in April, each one of us that participates, and not everybody participates every year. Um, this year we had one awesome lady who she just was like, I don't think I can commit to it this year, which I totally understand. So she didn't participate, but the rest of us did. Um, and we've had times in the past where we've had a couple people who didn't, but it's still, even if you didn't join in the swap, it's super fun to see what everybody does. So in April, um, those who are participating bring a skein of their own yarn. Um, you know, sometimes you pick a yarn that you're not sure what to do with, or sometimes you pick something that you really love. It's like a favorite skein and, um, and so you bring that skein of yarn and we all put it in a brown paper bag and we fill out a little questionnaire and put it inside the bag. And the questionnaire just talks about like 
different measurements, like a hat measurement, a foot measurement, what kinds of colors are your favorite, what kinds of things you really like, um, what things you wouldn't like, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And, um, and then everybody takes a bag. And so you don't know at first whose yarn you're gonna get or anything, and nobody knows who has them. And then we knit something for that person using their yarn. And then in October, we give those gifts and we exchange them back. And it is so much fun. I don't know how many years we've been doing this. Several, five more. I don't know, something around there. Um, it's just so much fun. So this year, oh my goodness, our exchange last night, it is literally the highlight of the year. It's so fun. Um, it's It can be intimidating to knit for knitters, but people are so creative and so just lovely and careful. Like careful meaning they really, you, we, we really try to think of the person that you're giving to. And um, it's not about perfection or anything like, nobody is expecting that. But, but people really do such a good job at really thinking about each other. And so, oh my goodness, it was just so lovely. So I wanna share what I got. I had put in a skein of yarn from Candy Shop Yarns. Big surprise, not like they're, you know, just my favorite. It was this Tropical Hideaway by Candy Shop Yarns, and this is a fingering weight. This is her Simple Syrup Base Liquid Candy, and it's Tropical Hideaway. Come on, there we go, somewhat. <laughs> so that is what I put in, was that, that yarn right there. Super fun, super bright, and I just loved it. And I had been kind of hoarding it, and I kept thinking, I don't wanna just make socks, you know? I mean, I can, I would absolutely love that but I don't want that to be socks. I want it to be something special. But anyway, so I put that into the swap and look what I got in return. So our friend Margaret had me and she made me this bag. Look at that bag. How cute is this? These cute little eyelets. It's a drawstring bag. And this bag is called, she put the details in, Pearl Pouch by Tori Yu. And I will put that information in the description box below. So it has these really, I'm hoping I can get this to focus in. Come on, focus, focus. Here we go. So it's got this bottom to it. And it has this awesome casing. Come on, there we go for the, <laughs> come on. Okay, we'll hold it back here. <laughs> this awesome casing for the drawstring with this really awesome um, Pico fold over. And she added another skein. We often will do that. The goal is to use as much of the skein of yarn that they put in as you can, but you can add to it as well. So she added a another skein that I believe was also, yes, it was another one um, from Candy Shop Yarns that is this kind of semi-solid coral that was called Tweet, Tweet, Tweet. Both of these are the Tiki Room collection. And then in addition to that, she made me these fantastic fingerless mitts with the fold over, cut the fold over fingers and thumb. I have done mitts with a fold over fingers, but I've never done them with a fold over thumb. And I absolutely love them. I have bracelets on right now. So let's see, get those out of the way. Look how cute those are. And so this can fold up, cover your fingers. This can fold up and cover your thumb. So when it's cold outside, oh, I'm dropping things. And you need to drive, but you also want to be able to, you know, access your phone and things like that. It's so nice. And she did such a beautiful job. So the bag is written, the pattern is written for, like I said, for DK weight. And she held the two different yarns together to make the bag. And then she used the leftovers to make these so cute mitts. 
And of course, being Margaret, she put some fun little extras in there. She put some really nice soap in and a bag of mixed nuts because I don't eat sugar. And so those are great for me. And I, so, I mean, just so fun. I came home and showed my kids and my husband what I got and my daughter, Abby, she literally gasped out loud when she saw this bag. She's like, it's a knitting bag that's knitted. It's a knitted knitting bag. <laughs> it's so fantastic. I love it so much. How cute. I'm wondering what color this yellow is because it looks, it's, it just matches in so perfectly for the little eye cord. Just so much fun. So anyway, isn't that cute and creative? I would never have thought to knit a bag and I love it. So that was way fun. Some other highlights, my sister Deborah from Candy Shop Yarns had our friend Wendy and Wendy is one half. Wendy and Becky are um, the two that do the granny pan knits podcast. So they will be, I'm sure, talking about our swap as well. And, um, but Deborah had Wendy and she crocheted shoes for her, like actual shoes. They're espadrilles. So creative. And then of course, probably my highlight, one of the jokes that everybody puts on, like we've had this joke running for a few years that on our little questionnaires for our swap, we, when you put things that you don't want, there's been a common comment of no bralettes. <laughs> it's just been a joke, like a running joke that none of us want a bralette. Well, Wendy knit a beautiful Venezia shawl by Hohi Locatelli for our friend Susie. Um, but <laughs> Underneath the shawl, underneath the tissue paper, there was a string bikini top that she had made. And it was so awesome. We got we got such a kick out of that. Just laughed and laughed. It was fabulous. So we had such a fantastic time. And it was it was cold and rainy outside and inside it was a ball. We had so much fun. Um, one of the other things that I um, came home with last night. Oh, this is going to be crackly and noisy. I hate that. Okay. Plug your ears for a minute. I, I talked a few episodes ago about my muscle burra hat that I had knit in Kinross four ply lamb's wool. Well, a bunch of us in our knitting group are now obsessed with Kinross four ply and I got these. <laughs> So Marilyn ordered a big order for, I think there were four or five of us that ordered together. And these are the ones that I got. There was one other color that I had wanted, but they were out of stock, which is, you know, understandable. So this is seashell, which I had used on my muscle burra hat. And I got more of that. This is called Firth. And this one is Mustard. And then I was looking at the colors that some other people got, like Scottish Pine and Highland Coo. And now I need more. <laughs> Aren't they so pretty? So this lamb's wool, I, I talked about this again. I think it was two, two or three episodes ago, but I mentioned about the fact that this, it's a non-superwash, 100% lamb's wool. Um, and it is fingering weight. There's 224 yards in 50 grams. So they're 50 gram skeins. So if you want to do a muscle burra hat with these, you really do need two skeins um, to do that. Um, you could do two of the same, two contrast, whatever. Um, I, I definitely had some leftovers of both of my colors that I used and I'm saving those up too because I'm going to make some more muscle burras. Um, I saved those so that I can do a striped version because all the colors I've purchased, I also had Inverary, which is kind of similar to this color. Um, but to, they, they all go together so nicely, but this stuff, it, when you first feel it, it feels quite rustic and then you block it and it blooms and relaxes and softens and just becomes, it's not like it becomes like silky or super drapey. It just, it just becomes magical. <laughs> I don't know. It's so fantastic. 
So those were some of the things that I came home with because they came in yesterday, right as Marilyn was walking out the door to come to our knit night. So that was fantastic. Okay, let's talk finished objects. So first off, I knit another pair of socks. Big surprise. I used this gorgeous yarn. This is from Lovejoy Fibers and Knits. Um, she is a local Salt Lake City dyer. And the colorway is Savage. And this is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, four ply, 700 or four, 700, 463 yards to 100 grams. Um, I would say there's two, probably the most common two um, sock yarn bases that I see from hand dyers, indie dyers, this one, and then the 8020, that's the two ply. So anyway, it's really nice. It's a lighter fingering weight. And these are the socks that I made. So I did this stitch pattern on the leg And these are really quite simple. I cast on my 64 stitches and knit 20 rounds and two by two rib. And then for the leg, I or for the pattern, I I did a six by two rib. So it's a total of an eight stitch count repeat. So you knit six. Um, well, every other, so you do two rows of knitting every round and then two rows of knit six, purl two, knit six, purl two, knit six, purl two. And then you just alternate those two. And I did my typical slip stitch heel flap and gusset and my rounded wedge toe. And so that's very common, my pattern, but I just like my recipe, you know, for my socks, but I added in that little bit of texture and I really like how it turned out. It's very simple. It was super easy. You get that little bit of garter stitch in those columns and then the rest is all just stockinette. It's just lovely and fun. And these are a little stretched out on the sock blockers because I keep forgetting now that it's time when you get up in the morning to put socks right on. So I came downstairs and I was making breakfast and everything and my feet were getting so cold and I had these handy waiting to podcast. So I just put them on. And anyway, so they got a little, you know, they're, they're, they've been worn for about an hour. <laughs> it's all good. Anyway, those are really fun. I knit those, I whipped those up really fast. So that was super fun. All right, so my next finished objects are the two finished objects that I did for the secret swap. Um, so I've, I haven't been able to show these. I did finish them, or I finished the shawl a couple months, or about a month and a half ago, and then, then I made fingerless mitts. So I'm gonna insert a little video here um, but the shawl is called Summer Tide and it is by Helen Stewart. And the mitts are the Cloud Burst Fingerless Mitts by Ariana Gray. And I will put those links down below. And the yarn that, and these are for our friend Sina. So the yarn that Sina put in her bag was that um, really pretty, um, tonal kind of gray. It actually has a ton of colors in it, but it's just so soft and subtle that they blend together really well. And so it's kind of almost like a charcoal gray is how it reads. And um, that was by Marionated Yarns. And then the pink, which is a really, really soft kind of neutral pink, is by Yarn Nouveau, another Salt Lake City dyer. And I believe the colorway was called Lydia. And it was great because I already had the Yarn Nouveau yarn at my house. And when I came home from the swap, um, where well, the, the knit night in April where we traded bags, and I brought it home and I took her skein of yarn out and I just put it in top of my little basket that I have on my counter in my sewing room. And it was, that pink yarn was sitting right there. And so I just put them together and I went, oh, well, look at those two together. I really liked how they looked together. And they were the same um, base. They were both an 80-20 sock yarn, um, the same plies and the same yardage and everything. So um, they were the same 
they had the same base that they were dyed on. And that was great because I knew they would play well together. So um, this is actually the first time I have finished knitting a Helen Stewart pattern. I own several Helen Stewart patterns. Um, my, I, I get a little overwhelmed by her patterns. Um, it's just a personality thing. She is such a meticulous, detail-oriented pattern writer. Um, very careful. And so this is not a flaw in her patterns. I tend to get bogged down if somebody gives me too many details. I really like a big picture. And so I'm definitely the kind of person that wants a chart, not written instructions. And I like to be able to see the overall vision. And so I've always felt a little bit overwhelmed because all of her patterns are written line by line by line. So she, where, whereas many designers would say like row one, do this, row two, do this. And then rows three through eight, or three, th yeah, repeat rows one and two or something like that, okay? I'm just, I mean, that's really similar to how I would write my patterns. I want to be very clear so you know exactly what you're supposed to do, but I don't necessarily go row one, here's all the instructions, row two, here's all the instructions, row three, same instructions all written out as row one, row four, same instructions all written out as row two. Does that, does that make sense? And, um, so I was a little, I loved this, the beautiful pattern. And I thought it would play so nicely with these yarns, but I was a little worried that I would get kind of bogged down. However, what I found is that she, she did a very good job of saying like row one, here's right side instructions, row two, here's wrong side and instructions. And then row three, it would just say RS for right side, row four, WS for wrong side. And so I was able to still get that big picture. But if you're somebody who wants that tick box, I mean, you can check off, if there's like a spot to check off your rows. So you know exactly where you are. And she had all of the lace pattern written and charted. And so when I got to the lace repeats, it was very easy for me to switch to the, pa the, the chart and not have to go line by line with written instructions because that would have really bogged me down. And I have dear knitting friends who are the exact opposite, who would vastly prefer that written out instruction and um, the charts are just not their thing. So it's very much a personal thing, but I'm really glad that I knit it. I enjoyed it immensely. I think that it turned out so nice. Sina loves it and it was just great. And then with the mitts, um, it was a very easy to follow pattern, simple lace and worked up really quickly. So I really enjoyed making them and I think she really loved them. So that was awesome. Okay, I have one more finished object and it is my grandson Adam's baby quilt. I actually finished it. This is the backing and oh, let's turn the fabric right side up so you can actually see it. But it has all these really fun bears and deer and hedgehogs and foxes, and what's that? Is that a badger, bunnies, squirrels, little birds, that's a robin. Anyway, just all kinds of really fun um, woodland creatures. And on the front, I have this beautiful um, herringbone pattern. It was a, quite a simple quilt, but for some reason I just really struggled to get it done. It also has woodland creatures and especially the hedgehogs on these. Just really super fun. So I finally finished. I did hand quilt this and um, I used um, a really nice fluffy cotton blend batting. And I am a sucker for a quilt that goes through the washer and the dryer and gets this crinkly, wrinkly texture to it. I know there are a lot of quilters out there who really want their quilt, they want to pre-wash all their fabrics to get as much shrinkage out of them as they can so that they can um, avoid as much of the puckering and wrinkling. I love that. To me, that's part of the charm of a quilt. And the thing that's great about a handmade quilt is the more you wash it, like 
the better it gets. It just, it keeps on getting softer and squishier and more loved. So that is the quilt that I made for Adam. And um, the finished measurements are 42 by 40, um, which is kind of a funny, I mean, it's a good, it's a good crib size. Not quite as big as some others, but I think it's just a perfect baby size. And especially because they can turn into really great lovey sizes. So I'm excited to give that to them. Um, we have in our church, we do a baby blessing, name and blessing. And um, it's kind of similar to a christening, um, but also a little bit different. And that is coming up for him at the end of this month. And so I'm excited to, I'll probably give this to them then. And in fact, my daughter and my grandson are coming over shortly. So I think I'm going to put this away before they get here. They're going to come over after I finish podcasting. But I love how it turned out. I really like the binding. The way I do my bindings are um, I sew them to the front and then with a machine. And then I fold it around to the back and I hand stitch it down on the back. And I just use a mattress stitch to hand stitch that or an invisible stitch. Um, and it doesn't take very long at all to do that. I did a narrow binding on this one and I didn't do any kind of like borders. I just went ahead and bound right on the pieced quilt part. And I think it's so great. It's so squishy and I'm so happy that it's done. I have been slow. It's been, it's definitely a family tradition for there to be quilts for weddings and quilts for babies. And I have managed it, but I have been late on all, late on all of them. So none of those quilts have been done for their wedding or for the baby to be born. But I've kept it going anyway. <laughs> all right, those are all my finished objects today. Let's talk works in progress. I am only going to talk about my one work in progress today, which is the Stephen West knit along, mystery knit along. So as many of you probably know, there has been a lot of um, talk about this mystery knit along as far as the the original pattern. And th there are going to be major spoilers here. So if you do not want spoilers, you're going to want to skip ahead. <laughs> In fact, I will put a timestamp below. Let me make a note so I don't forget. Timestamp to skip ahead if you do not want to um, get any spoilers. But the, the original Clue 1, many people who were knitting the Clue 1 and who saw pictures of it, thought that it looked like a swastika and um that obviously nobody wants that <laughs> um many many other people including myself really can't see that but i also can understand why people would not want to knit it if that is something that they see and stephen west has been amazingly gracious and careful in trying to take care of this situation. So um, anybody who has seen any of his videos or anything that he has put out, I've just really been, I just feel for him because obviously he didn't see that and anybody who test knit it didn't see that because he would never have published it if that, that way, if that were the case. Um, but he has pivoted beautifully and there have been people who have hurt feelings on both sides of this. Um, for me, it kind of did take the wind out of my sails a little bit because I'd finished or was all, I mean, I was this close to being done with Clue One, the original Clue One, when all of this came out. Um, and there have been people, as, as is the case, no matter what, there have been people who've been ugly and mean about it on both sides of the whole, does it look like it or doesn't look like it? Pro clue one, anti clue one, whatever. I join this knit along and this is um, only my second year in a row doing it. 
I've watched it many years and I have gone back and knit some of the mystery knit along projects later, but this is only my second year fully in. Um, but the reason that I joined it last year and the reason that I joined it this year is because I love knitting along with other knitters and I love learning the techniques that Stephen West comes up with and his amazing tutorials. And I love just that sense of community. And I don't want to lose that sense of community. Um, I really want it to be a beautiful thing. Um, I have three other friends from my knitting group, Margaret and Sina and Ashley, that are knitting this, doing the mystery knit along as well. And so we share with each other. And um, I love that part of it. It's all about that knitting us together, right? That commu sense of community and being in, a, being united in something. And um, so I just have to say that I, re I am not getting involved in any negativity in regards to this. Whether or not you um, see or don't see the this that symbol in the pattern or whether you agree about completely removing that pattern or don't agree in the end this is a shawl it is not it is not of eternal significance <laughs> we'll just put it that way and the most important thing is that we are kind to each other i have ke i have kept my clue one I haven't done that because I'm like, so like anti clue two or, you know, anti the revised clue and everybody should stick with, I don't, it's just because I had already knit it and I chose to keep it and I have, um, no concerns that I'm going to wear this somewhere with it all being knit up and have somebody, um, that it's worrying or hurting them. So... I am gonna stick, I'm sticking with clue one. Um, but I have loved, loved seeing the creativity of people who have come up with so many fun ways. Um, so here is my finished clue one. So this is my finished clue one. Clue two is out today and I haven't started it yet, but I have looked ahead a little bit. So that is what it looks like. And I, um, I'm really enjoying my colors and the techniques that were used here were really fun. The stripes, I mean, other than the fact that there's 96 ends to weave in the square, you know, that, that part was not my favorite, but it's okay. And so I can see why for some people that might look like a hate symbol. For me, it doesn't. Um, it reminds me again, probably because of my love of quilting. It reminds me of quilting blocks that I've done in the past. Um, but I have loved seeing how other people have customized their squares. Um, in the end, the goal for clue one is to end up with your square with all of your correct number of stitches on the outside. So you can go from there and people have been so creative. In fact, the main reason I would want to redo clue one is just so I could try something else out because there have been so many fun ideas. I have seen crocheted, like kind of almost granny squares and then knit, knit stitches picked up and borders knit on. Um, there have been lots of different kind of mitered, mitered, yeah, almost like mitered, not like a mitered square, but anyway. Basically chevrons, that's a good way to say it. Chevrons knit out from the center. Some people have done a color work. Some people have added lace. Um, people have used the same kind of striping, but done it in different patterns. So it is really fun to see how many people have come up with creative ways to change that. That to me is inspiring. That really is inspiring to say, you know what? We were all planning on going down this route and then we hit a roadblock and people have managed to figure out their way around that roadblock in fabulous ways. And Stephen West has handled it with extreme amounts of grace. And I mean, he's imperfect. He's a human being like everybody else. So maybe you disagree with how he said some things or whatever. 
Um, but I really believe that like in the end, he really wants people to be able to have a great time knitting together. And he's put so much work into this and I just am happy to be continuing on. I did have a couple days. Oh, I keep doing that. My, my little needles hit my tripod here a couple times. Anyway, I did have a couple of days where I kind of felt a little deflated, a little bit like, oh, where did all the fun go? But you know what? That's okay. We can get over that and keep moving on. So I'm really excited to dive into clue two and it's going to start going this direction and that direction off from the center square. And um, yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm debating adding some mohair in there. I don't know, I just wanna get creative. And most of all, at the end, I want to, I want to be able to face any situation like this because situations come up. Because we are all humans and we all have different feelings and backgrounds and worldviews, there are gonna be times where we bump into each other and we clash. And that is just kind of unavoidable from talking to other people. It's just life, right? And so I really want to be able to, at the end of any situation like that, be able to look back and say, I'm proud of the way that I treated other people. I'm proud of the way that I handled the situation, not as in a pat yourself on the back, but just to be able to have that inner peace and not have to have a lot of regret over losing, losing my cool or being cruel or anything like that. I just want to be, I want to be kind. But I also want to be able to draw my own boundaries and say, I've already knit this. I'm going to keep going with it. And in the end, what shawl I choose to wear does not affect anybody else. And if it does, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I hope that we can all get past it. And that's how I feel about that. So anyway, but now I'm excited to move on. I'm excited to keep going. And, um, and yeah, it's really fun to be able to share those things. I may not post pictures on Instagram of my shawl because I don't want to invite people that don't really know me very well and don't hear this explanation into bashing, if that makes sense. Um, but sharing it here where I can explain my own thoughts and feelings, I will do that. That is my only work in progress. I have another design that I'm working on and I am working on writing up patterns, but that is the one that I can show for now. Okay, in my pattern news, I am doing a testing call for my backcountry shawl. And again, this is the back, oh, here we go. The backcountry shawl, it is a crescent shaped three color shawl. It takes three, three skeins, 100 grams each of fingering weight yarn. And um, I knit it in the Malabrigo Ultimate Sock in Frank Ochre, Pascal, and Neverland. And um, this testing call is going out now. Um, it's not going to be a super duper speedy test knit. Um, my plan is to publish this pattern in January. And so we will be able to work on it over the next few months. So I'm working on finishing it and getting it to my tech editor. And then as soon as it's through my tech editor, I will be able to get it out to testers. So if you are interested, please follow the link in the description box below. And um, yeah, and I would love to have you test knit. So there is just a little form that you fill out and then I will reach out to you. Um, but I am really excited about this shawl. I really love it. And um, I will be doing a testing call probably in another couple of weeks for a single skein. Um, I showed that single skein scarf last week and I'm redesigning the edges of it, the border, the, yeah, the edging of it. Um, and then I will be putting together that testing call as well. So if you're looking for a single skein project, that would be a great one for you. And that testing call will either be, it'll probably be next week. Um, okay, let's talk about books. 
So first off, the knitting book. For my birthday, I got this fantastic book that just came out last week. So this came out on just this week, sorry, on Tuesday. In fact, for my birthday, I got the paper saying this book is coming to you. And then it arrived just two days ago. And it is so fun. I already have the altern alternate um, stitch dictionary. And this is by Andrea Wrangle. I think it's Wrangle. Um, this is a color work stitch dictionary. And it is so fun. I don't want to really show charts inside because I really want to support um, people buying the patterns instead of copying them. But look how fun those is. Look, those are the leaves, the apples, suns. Like, look at the penguins. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And this little horse pattern, I love that. It is a quite small stitch repeat and it is so darling. The pandas. So there's everything from leaves and flowers and geometric designs to animals. And I mean, I think there's toilets in here. <laughs> Pretty much if you would want to put it into color work, it's probably in there or something close to it. The dinosaurs are so fun. And the great thing about this book is not only does it give you all of these charts, in the end, it also gives you some patterns um, that you can apply the charts to. So there's a hat pattern. There's a, a fingerless mitts. There are yoked, there's a yoked sweater. I think those are the three. Hat, mittens, and yoked sweater. And um, let me look at this really quick. Do, 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 do. I wanted to tell you what the sizing was for the sweater. Let's see goes up to 69 inch circumference for the sweater. So, and um, starts at 33 inches. So it has a wide range of sizes in it. It's just awesome. It's so fun. So, I mean, if you wanna knit a yoked sweater, look how fun this is. You could add all kinds of these patterns in there and just totally make it yourself. I love it. It's super fun. So that was an awesome gift that I got. And I have looked through it probably five different times. Um, I got a new little ottoman. I don't know if you can see it. Nope, it's like right behind me to go with my chair. And this has just been out on it. It's like a coffee table book. <laughs> so that was my first book recommendation. I It was delivered from Amazon. So um, the person who gave it to me purchased it through Amazon. Um, but it's quite widely available. All right, the second book recommendation. I am reading this book again. I've read it at least three times before, but it's one that I'm doing for the class that I'm teaching. It's Wild Swans, Three Daughters of China by Yung Chung. And it is so extremely good. Um, it is not a sit down comfort pleasure read necessarily because it deals with so many difficult topics. Um, but it talks about the lives, it talks about the, basically the history of China through the lives of three women. Um, Yung Chang, who is the author, was raised during the Cultural Revolution and um, the, you know, some really hard times in communist China. Her mother, um, was a communist revolutionary and her grandmother was a concubine to a during the the warlord kind of feudal system that existed before world war ii and so it really talks about their experiences and but it is so beautiful in the ways that it shares it's not just about the um the challenges of different political systems and things like that. There's a lot of that, which I find very interesting, but it's the beautiful lives of these women and how they handle these amazing different 
challenges that they face and the grace and the culture and the love that they have and um, their passion and their dedication to their beliefs and their causes. So it's just very good. Again, it is a very difficult read as far as a lot of the subject matter, you know, dealing with famine and some brutality and um, different things like that. So I wouldn't dive into it if you're not okay with those things, um, but it is beautifully written, absolutely beautifully written. Um, and I love, I've been half, half reading it and half listening to it. I love listening to it on Audible because I don't speak Chinese and I don't know how to pronounce a lot of the names and of people and cities and things like that. And I love being able to hear them and then I can see them in the print and I can start to make those connections. Um, but I also really love holding the book in my hands and reading it. So I've kind of been back and forth between them, depending on the situation. Like at night, when I'm going to bed, I'm reading it in paper. And if I'm, you know, running errands and I'm in the car or I'm cooking dinner or knitting, then I have the audio audible going. So I've kind of gone back and forth between these two. I also really love in the book, there's a um, section of photos and I re you, you know, you don't get that with the audible. And so I love being able to go and look at the photos of the people that are being referred to and, um, Dr. Shaw. Anyway, so good. Um, I've really, really, really enjoyed this book. And it's been several years since I read it the last time. And so I'm really enjoying it. I'm getting ready to have a discussion with my 16, 17, 18 year olds that I am um, teaching in our world use class. And that'll be next week. And so anyway, that is really, really good. Okay, it's been a good long episode for me, but there was so much to talk about. I think that's everything that I wanted to share. I would love if you would comment below and let me know which projects you liked the most um, of the ones that I shared. You can definitely share your thoughts about the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. I ask you to please be respectful and um moderate your tone, even if you have strong feelings in the way that we speak about um, things that are sensitive topics. Um, I also would love it if you enjoyed this video, if you would click like and hit the subscribe button. And I will be back next week and I will show you hopefully a finished clue too and show you what else is going on. So thank you again for joining me. And until I see you next time, have a great time with all of your making. Bye-bye.